What's going on guys? Unknown player here and today once again we've got a whole bunch of Destiny 2 topics to round up and discuss inside this video. Lots of super interesting things as we're only weeks away from the big update and then Forsaken itself. But we're going to be talking about a secret quest that's in the game right now which no one's figured out just yet or it may be time gated that involves Cade 6 and also the sources of Heroes event. Also some pretty massive changes as the game transitions from year 1 into year 2 that not a lot of people know about like for example elements being permanently locked forever on certain weapons so there's a lot of interesting stuff like that We're also going to be talking about the last word exotic can cannon for all those of you hoping it comes back and of course a massive roundup with lots of bits of news and random bits and pieces mentioned by bungie and streams and stuff like that so as always if you enjoy this video a like rating helps support the channel and of course it's massively appreciated without further ado let's get into it so something bungie added to the game with the recent sources of heroes event isn't actually live in game just yet it may be time gates or maybe no one's figured it out just yet but it appears to be related to Cade 6, Spicy Ramen has got an unknown quest to it, and also Milestone as well. Obviously with him dying in the very beginning of Forsaken, it would make a lot of sense for this to be tied to like a pre-launch week of Forsaken, like a precursor before to kind of send him off in a good way. But the confusing thing is that it does all seem to be tied to the sources of Heroes event, somehow of course by the icons that as you can see here we've got the quest step which is called Cade's Spicy Ramen. Obviously the icon there is the same as the sources event, so there's definitely some kind of correlation. There's also the expired Ramen coupon which is a basic redeemable obviously an item that drops in game this one says valid for one free bowl of ramen with a side of gyoza this expired a decades ago so the next step in this unknown quest is to take that coupon you've just acquired however you do that and go to the ramen shop in the tower it says unknown it goes to the ramen shop in the tower objectives one visit the ramen shop to redeem your coupon there is also another coupon which is the unexpired version this one just says spicy ramen coupon legendary consumer which is interesting this coupon has expired so this appears to be the emblem which you can already get inside the game not sure if it's temporary but this appears to be again related to all this for some reason i feel like this expired one is something you'd get from Cade himself like one that was in his pocket maybe he gives it to you or maybe trades it to you or even you get off his dead body in forsaken it just seems like something you might get from Cade himself who knows but there's also of course the ramen shop in the tower it does say the tower whereas you may have noticed also another ramen shop inside that kind of special area for the sources event so down the alleyway you can see a ramen shop here i know the first time i went down here i definitely noticed this ramen shop it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb down here so maybe there's something related to that as well either way though something super random who knows when it's going to be available but definitely something worth being aware of as a kind of heads up this is in the game we're probably going to do it sometime soon it's going to involve cade maybe the sources event and of course the ramen shop somewhere so i wanted to talk about something which is actually very confusing but also very important if you care about what element your weapons are going to be in forsaken it's something that hardly anyone really realizes right now but has actually been talked about on twitter by bungie the reason i say this is so important is because based on what bungie have said so far it does seem like you can set yourself up to a massive advantage if you do the right things before the dlc launches but essentially as you may or may not know the ability to change a weapons element like the solar mods the arc mods the void mods that is going away completely in year two in forsaken you won't be able to do that anymore so if you think of an energy auto rifle that drops in year two that is going to drop as a solar weapon it's going to fix like that and as far as bungie have said you can't change that with random rolls or anything like that it's going to be always a solar weapon and everyone's going to have a set element now as far as our year one weapons like a Uriel's gift for example that is also going to be fixed so if you go to the collections kiosk weapon you've already got for example like Uriel's gift if you go and take out there it's always going to be for example art they haven't picked one just yet but it's going to be a fixed element all the time for everyone so i'm going to go through this twitter thread of questions and answers that involves two bungie sandbox designers who answered a bunch of questions so so Josh Hamrick, of course, is the Bungie developer here. He is a gameplay design lead, and he was being asked, can we still change the elements, or is it part of the random roll drop now? He said that functionality is being removed, and then it was asked by two people, what happens if you pull a year one weapon from the collection? What element is going to drop? And he then said, it's going to be a fixed roll. Not sure which just yet, of course. But it's always going to be the same one for everyone. So if, for example, Bungie choose the Ural's Gift to be an arc weapon, it'll be physically impossible to ever get a solo or void one going forward from the Forsaken update. Now, because of this there is actually a workaround where if you were to get a solo and void euros gift before the update before forsaken like right now you will be able to keep that forever and it's not going to be changed to arc so in response to this thread some people got the right idea like paris and he said if i'm reading this right if i slash an arc solo and void euros gift now i can keep it going into forsaken and i won't be forced into being for example all three being arc and then josh replied saying pretty much yeah assuming everything works as intended and as far as he's aware and then another bungee designer called greg peng he replied saying for you yes 
but not for the guns who make kinetic and don't get too attached to your EP weapon damage types. So it does go even deeper. Hopefully you're still following me on this very confusing long thread, but essentially most normal weapons like Uriel's, you can get one of each and you will have an advantage when they kind of fix the elements later on. But then it says not for the guns we're making kinetic. So for example, if you don't know, the Hawthorne shotgun is going to be made into a kinetic non-elemental weapon. So that doesn't matter what you pick, it's going to be kinetic with no element. But next is where things get confusing. He says don't get too attached to your EP or escalation protocol weapons. So the shotgun, sniper and SMG, implying they're going to change elements. So if you want a big takeaway from all of this, I would say go out and try and get three elements of all your favorite energy weapons because in September they're going to be fixed and you won't ever be able to get a different element ever again. And I'm pretty certain based on Bungie's tweets this also applies to the raid weapons. So the inaugural address, the raid pulse rifle, which is a fantastic weapon, that is only going to drop a certain element. It's going to be fixed. It's not going to be random. And of course you can't change it anymore. And even things like rocket launchers as well, like since the past, the curtain call, try and get one of each element to your advantage. But at the same time, it's not a massive deal. It's not the end of the world if you don't get all three. Of course, in year two is going to be much more significantly powerful weapons. So you're not going to be using year one weapons the whole time. There's going to be much more stuff to get. But either way, I thought it was a very interesting and definitely very important topic to tell you guys about right now. Hopefully you benefit from it. And of course, comment down below what you guys think. So next up, we're going to talk about a pretty interesting interview with Bungie done by Game Informer. Talk about a whole bunch of random things. Definitely one of the most noteworthy topics was the last word and bad juju exotics. Of course, returning from Destiny 1, is it going to happen? So the first one is, is the last word going to be back in this DLC? My, my, uh, I don't think we're announcing think? any new exotics, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're not announcing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, lots more, we lots will, more to come we might very soon. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Because one of these questions is just bad juju, which I saw a lot. That's uh, the same, same answer. Same, I right. think like very, very, <laughs> very soon uh, you'll get some more okay. info. So obviously it wasn't a yes, no response. They didn't really answer the question. I must have seen like a hundred Bungie interviews by now with Bungie developers. Obviously they're all media trained. They know how to dodge difficult questions. This was definitely one of those. The reason this is funny though, is because in an interview with the same Game Inform people and the same Bungie developers a few weeks ago, you might remember I covered it. Someone asked them, is the G-Horn gonna return? They simply said no. Gellerhorn? No. Is Goku playable? No. It was the same Bungie developers, Steve and Scott, and they flat out said, no, it's not returning with no hesitation or awkward pauses or laughs. They just said, no, it is not. So you can definitely speculate why didn't they say no to the last word and bad juju. Surely if it's not returning, they'd just say no like the G-Horn. You probably remember days after Forsaken was revealed, I made a video talking about how the last word would make so much sense to return. It fits the theme of revenge and hunters and hand cannons and Western showdown. That is literally the law of the last word. I know a lot of you guys want to see it back as well. So based on their very much dodge of a response, I think it's very possible. We'll have to wait and see, I guess. In the same interview, they did mention a few other interesting things. So they said how infusion is not going to be across weapon types like auto rifles, only into auto rifles. It's going to be across the same slot. So kinetic, energy, and heavy. They were also asked who is the new hunter vanguard. And Bungie said, why don't you play it and find out? Kind of implying that it's going to be one for sure, not just going to be his empty slot like we might have seen earlier. My personal bet would still be on Shiro 4, but of course, comment down below who do you think it's going to be. Of course, if you don't know, they are putting individual strikes on the map now, so you can pick one and do it by itself regardless of the strike playlist. But something new from the interview is that unlike Destiny 1, these individual strikes are going to have matchmaking. So that's pretty cool. You can go in there with other people. They were asked, is there going to be Baron exclusive loot? And they also said, play the game to find out. So again, implies it's probably going to be, seeing as they didn't say no. They also unfortunately revealed there's going to be no class specific exotic. So a gun only hunters can use like the Ace of Spades was or Talar Lock. Unfortunately, it's going to be none of those. And they also said that the Cryptarch is going to be the one to bulk the elite shader. So you go to him, and he's going to bulk delete any shaders and stacks of five. So you go up to him and just spam the button and get rid of five at a time instead of holding it. And you're doing one at a time every second or two. Of course, that feature is going to be in the update on the 28th of August. So right before Forsaken. And for that period of time, the Cryptarch is going to be the most loved character in the game. So next up, I did want to quickly talk about and summarize, of course, Bungie's reveal stream for the new Sandbox design. My personal favorite thing from the stream and probably my favorite thing I've seen so far from Forsaken in general is the way the weapon system is looking with perks and loadouts and mods. The main thing is that weapon weapons now have two traits on them instead of just the one which we've had so far. They have two actual meaningful perks like explosive rounds or range finder, stuff like that. This, in my opinion, is going to be so, so massive for the, the loot system, for your incentive to play the game, trying to get good rewards. It's going to be so, so important. Better Devils is one of very few year one weapons actually getting its own separate and different year two version. So this is what it looks like. Just to clarify, the Better Devils you have right now is not going to change, not going to get new perks or random rolls, going to have the same explosive rounds in it. This one, has explosive payload and the final return of range finder so it's back in destiny 2 and then on top of that of course you now have mod systems so these are a third perk pretty much but these of course you can choose the masterwork system is also improved so it's not just like an on off yes no thing it's like a progressive system of one to ten and also instead of a five percent buff in a 
a stat, you get 10% now. Also, hand cannons can now finally get range as a masterwork stat bonus. So think of the customization. You've got two random perks plus a mod, which is basically on a third perk plus your masterwork, which is 10% of any stat bonus. Of course, they're also globally reducing the time to kill, so faster time to kill, basically. They showed off a high-impact pulse rifle, pretty much two bursting to the head, but like left them on time bit of health. Low-impact scouts do five shots to the head. You've got the fast rate of fire autos, do a lot of headshot damage, and high-impact hand cannons, they do two body and one headshot to kill. Also, to match that, we are getting two-hit melee, so no longer three, no longer a punch vest, going to be two-hit melees, again, like Destiny 1. Something people are very torn about for Titans, you may love this shoulder charges are now a one hit but of course you have to charge up it's not just like do it every 10 seconds like destiny one you have to charge up an actual melee charge also insurmountable skull for is probably going to be ridiculous unless they nerf it you can basically get a one hit kill get your melee back and just infinitely do it like destiny one they're also buffing stormcaller to kill faster you've got the ward of dawn is gonna have more health and give you more of a shield inside it golden gun is gonna last two more seconds and tether is going to activate a lot faster and stick to people much better but yeah a ton of changes this sandbox is going to be very very different comment down below what do you think all this but i hope you guys all enjoyed today's video of course if you did a like rating down below helps me out a bunch and would be massively appreciated make sure you are subscribed to this channel if you're not already to stay up to date with me and of course my instagram and twitter also linked down below in the description if you want to watch another video from myself you can click this image on screen right now to be taken to it but as always i appreciate you guys for watching and i'll see you all in the next one